Bro, that fishing trip was exactly what I needed. Seriously, the best weekend in a long time. Right? It felt amazing to get away from everything for a bit. No work, no chores, just beers and good vibes with the best buddy a guy could ask for. Absolutely. And hey, bonus point for catching that monster trout. Jamie was not happy when I got home and shoved that thing in her face. <laughs> I bet. So, was the house a complete disaster zone on your return? Paula had the dishes piled up for days while I was gone. You're telling me. It's like they can't function without us. I swear, my place looked like a hurricane had hit it. Toys everywhere, laundry piled sky high. I feel your pain. It's like sometimes I'm the dad and Paula is the irresponsible teenager. Mess everywhere. <laughs> Too true. Do you think they secretly do understand how stuff works? They just play dumb so we have to do it? Like a strategy or something? That's not a bad theory. Maybe it's some kind of wives' secret pact passed down through generations. They are sisters after all. No oh, man, we're doomed. Seriously though, it's kind of weird how we're both the ones cooking, cleaning, keeping up with all the house stuff. Isn't this supposed to be the other way around? I know, right? We're the modern husbands, I guess. Breaking those stereotypes. Hell yeah. Makes you appreciate getting out on trips like that even more. At least out in the wild, no one expects you to tidy up after them. Absolutely. I'm already counting down the days until our next adventure. And who knows, maybe by then Paula and Jamie will have miraculously learned to pick up after themselves. Dream on, my friend, dream on. Okay, duty calls. Gotta unpack this mess. Catch you later. Hey, honey. How was your day? I missed you. Did you see my message about getting steak for dinner? Hi, sweetie. Just finishing up. Sorry, I didn't see your message. I've been so busy here. Yeah, steak sounds great. I love when you spoil me. You deserve to be spoiled. I'm going to order soon. See you at home? Any idea what time you might make it back? Yeah, I'm about to head out now. Can't promise a specific time. Traffic might be bad. Don't let me hold you up. Go ahead and order and I'll dig in when I arrive. No problem, honey. Drive safe. I can't wait to see you. Ugh, traffic has been brutal. I'm still nowhere near home. I'm sorry, looks like it's gonna be a while yet. I wish I could be eating yummy steak with you right now. Don't worry, I'll leave you some of it if I start to get full. How about I grab us some ice cream too, for a while you settle in? What flavor do you fancy? Ugh, you're the best. Vanilla chocolate swirl if they have it, please. Thank you. Consider it done. Okay, so while I'm waiting at the restaurant, I got a call from Jamie. Guess what? Hmm, what's happening? Did she get that promotion she was chasing? No, actually, it's not great news. Looks like Dad lost a bunch of money on some bad investments or something. The thing is, he's going to have to sell the house. What? Really? Oh, that is awful. Is he okay? Hang on, but surely he wouldn't be that bad at investing. I mean, he's always been careful with money, right? Well, that's the thing. He wasn't investing. It was like gambling. Jamie is furious, and she says he's been doing this secretly for a while now. Gambling? That doesn't sound like your dad at all. Is he sure it wasn't a scam or something? Apparently not. I guess when the market took a bad turn, he panicked and lost big. I feel so bad for him. No kidding, but what does selling the house mean for him? Where is he going to live? He can't just become homeless. That's the other thing. Jamie and Larry are taking him in for a while until he sorts himself out. Wow, with Jamie and Larry? Is that, uh, wise? I mean, we didn't exactly see that going well last time. I know, I was thinking the same thing. I think it's because Dad owns half the house still from when Mom's stuff got finalized, so Jamie wants to make sure she gets that sale money eventually. She said they could use it towards a bigger house anyway. Uh, this is uh, a lot to take in. I get wanting family to be there, but still. 
Remember the whole debacle with trying to find him a care home? Your sister's not exactly the most patient person. True, but Jamie says she feels it's her duty as the oldest and blah, blah, blah. I think we should offer to keep him with us until he gets back on his feet, right? We have the room. Mm, I'm not so sure about that, honey. Uh, don't get me wrong. I feel for him. I do. But you know how things were before. He can be a bit, well, demanding. Come on, he's our dad. We need to at least offer. I don't want Jamie thinking we don't care about him. All right, all right, if you insist, we'll offer, but I'm not getting involved in any arguments or caregiving drama. Jamie can shoulder that responsibility. Okay, deal. I love you, and thanks for being understanding. Now get home so we can finally eat the steak. Hey, Larry, I haven't heard from you in a long time. How have you been? I bet Stevie has grown a lot. Hey, Adam. Yeah, the same as usual, really. You know how it is. Stevie started to talk. He chatters to himself all day long. <laughs> it's really cute to hear. How about you? How have you been? Yeah, same. I just seem to be going from my house to work and back to my house again. I don't have time to do anything else to tell you the truth. No, oh, yeah, it's Phil's birthday on Thursday, isn't it? Since he fathered both of our wives, we should do something for him. <laughs> It would have been great if we could all meet together that day, but I think I'm going to have to work overtime that night, so I won't be able to make it. I was wondering if it would be okay if we all met at your place on the weekend instead. Would that be alright with you? On Saturday, um... The thing is, I was planning to go to LA to visit my mom at the weekend. A few weeks ago, she had a carpal tunnel surgery on her wrist, you see? I couldn't visit her when she was in the hospital because it's so far from here. But now that she's back home, I thought I should go see her and maybe help her out a bit. Oh, I see. Well, that can't be helped. I hope your mom makes a speedy recovery. I guess we'll just have to go and see him separately at the weekend. Okay, that sounds like a good plan. I'm sorry that we won't be able to meet again, but I guess it really can't be helped this time. We'll make sure Dad has a great birthday on Thursday, so don't worry about that. Okay, thanks. We'll just have to meet each other next time when we're all free. Have a safe trip to LA. Thanks, speak to you soon. Jim, are you there? Oh, were you cleaning? It's only us. You didn't have to clean everything so spotlessly before we arrived. He's right, Dad. You could have just put the vacuum cleaner around or something. What are you doing cleaning the floor on your hands and knees? You'll get sore knees. Larry always says that you have to do it like this if you want to get it really clean. He says that if you just use a mop, you can't get in the edges and corners properly, and you can't feel if the floor is clean or not. He likes it a lot better if I clean the floor like this. If it's a mess when he gets back from L.A. tomorrow, he's sure to say something. So I thought I'd better clean properly before he gets back. How messy can you make it just by yourself? I'm sure he wouldn't say anything. I'm also sure that he wouldn't expect you to be crawling around on the floor on your hands and knees cleaning at your age. If he wants the floor cleaned by hand like this, he should do it himself. You don't know what he's like to live with. You wouldn't believe what a clean freak he is. Honestly, you wouldn't. You have to vacuum and mop the floor by hand at least once a day. And he hates it if anything at all is left on the table. He says the table is for eating on, not leaving stuff on. I have to wash the bedding once a week as well. I do it all, then hang it all out to dry as well. Oh, I see. Now I know why Jamie's house was always so clean, even with a baby. Surely Larry should be doing all that, though. Why are you doing it instead of him? I'm doing it because everyone else works. I'm the only one at home, you see. Jamie and Larry are at work all day until Stevie comes home from daycare. So all the housework falls onto me. I guess it makes sense that I do most of it, really. It's just that Larry is so strict about it. If I finish all this before he gets back, I'll feel more comfortable. If I don't do it, I'll feel like he's judging me. 
Larry judges you for not doing the housework? Of course he does. He wasn't happy about me selling my place and moving into theirs from the start, was he? I feel like he's punishing me for being here when he didn't want me to move in in the first place. At first, when I said I'd look after Stevie, he got mad and he shouted that he was fine and him and Jamie could do it themselves. But when we actually started living together, he always asked me to go and pick Stevie up from daycare for him and things like that. He doesn't even feel a bit sorry about asking me to do things for him now. He just comes out with it as bold as brass. Dad, me and Jamie are both going to be late home from work today. You'll have to watch Stevie for us. It makes me feel bitter towards him. What? Larry behaves like that towards you? I didn't think he was that kind of person. He always seemed so polite and caring. To be honest, neither did I until we moved in together. He used to follow me around doing everything I asked before. How times have changed. Now he seems to sigh every time he catches sight of me, and it feels like I'm the one doing everything he asks. I think it's because now that we live together, I'm just a burden on him. A few weeks ago, Stevie's friend's dad came over to our place. They must have said something to Larry after they left, I suppose. I didn't do anything to make them uncomfortable. I just got them some snacks and stuff, but they said that I made them uncomfortable and they didn't want to come again. Larry told me that if his friends come over again, I should just stay in my room quietly. I'm not even allowed out of my room. He treats me like dirt. He really does. Wow, I didn't expect that of Larry. He's always so kind and well-mannered when we meet. What does Jamie say? She doesn't just ignore his behavior even though he's acting like that towards you, does she? She's so busy I hardly see her. She doesn't usually get home until bedtime anyway. I'd feel bad telling her how I'm feeling. I was worried that it would make her worry about me and cause problems between the two of them. So I've just been putting up with it. I thought I'd at least be able to see Jamie more if we lived together, but she's so busy that that isn't the case. But I feel so uncomfortable here, watching what I do and I say all the time. Oh, Dad, don't cry. Sit down here and tell us what's been happening from the beginning. I think there seems to be a huge misunderstanding between you and Larry. Surely he didn't just change suddenly for no reason? Are you sure nothing happened between the two of you to start all of this? What do you mean a misunderstanding? I've just been behaving like I usually do. He's the one who started to act worse and worse towards me. It was my birthday this Thursday, wasn't it? He asked me if there was anything that I wanted to eat. I said, let's go to the restaurant I like. And I don't know why it suddenly made him so annoyed, but he looked unhappy. Later, he asked me if I really had to eat everything I wanted to. What on earth does that mean? And on my birthday as well? He meant that I could just eat anything, that there was no need to go to any trouble for my birthday, didn't he? No, oh, I felt so sad and hurt after hearing him speak to me like that. Surely I should be able to go where I want for my birthday, shouldn't I? Why did he have to make me feel even bad about that? Oh, I feel like I'm living half a life at the moment. Oh, don't cry, Dad. You'll make me cry too. Why didn't you tell us before? You could have told me or Adam, couldn't you? Shall I phone Jamie now? I don't think they should be going to LA now. They should come back here so we can try to sort this mess out. I wonder if Jamie even knows how Larry treats you. I bet she'd be really upset if she did. You are her father, after all. It's more important to sort this out with you, the father who lives with them, than it is to visit his mom in LA right now. I heard that Larry's mom had surgery on her wrist not long ago. He should probably go there to check his mom's okay. Moreover, she lives far away from here. Larry can only go on the weekends. He couldn't even visit her in the hospital because he didn't have time to go there and back. That's true, but it isn't the point. It's not our fault that she lives so far away. If Larry treated our dad even half as good as how he treats his mom even when she lives so far away, we wouldn't have this problem now. He's Jamie's dad as well. At least my lovely Paula understands how I'm feeling. 
I knew you two would be like this, though. That's why I didn't tell you before. I didn't want to start an argument between you and Jamie either. I hardly see either of you as it is. I was worried that if I told you, you'd fall out and I'd see you even less than I already do. Jamie hasn't done anything wrong anyway. It's all my fault, you see. If I hadn't sold the house to pay off my debt, everything would have been fine. Larry's only looking down on me now because I don't have a house anymore. He didn't treat me like this before because I had a house and so was more respected. I'm nothing but a lowly housekeeper here now. No, Jim, don't. None of this is your fault. But every time I see Larry, I blame myself for getting into this situation. And when I hear his voice, I feel scared. Scared about what he's going to say to me or what he's going to make me do. It's lucky we met you when you were here alone like you are today so that you could tell us all of this. How long were you planning on just living like you are now without saying anything? Does Larry at least feed you all right? Well, I have to put something in the fridge for there to be anything for me to use to make dinner. He's so house proud that if anything in the fridge is even about to go off or smells at all, he throws it out. Have a look in there now. There's only a scrap of salad and some fruit that has no scent in there. What am I supposed to make with that? There isn't even any milk or cheese. The only thing I've eaten today is a piece of toast. What? It's nearly dinner time now, and that's all you have eaten all day today? That's crazy. There really is nothing for you to eat in this house. I can't believe they just went to LA and left you without even any ingredients to make dinner. What would have happened if we hadn't taken you out for dinner tonight? What would you have eaten then? Larry should have at least left you some ingredients so that you could have made yourself something. Dad, tell us everything that has been going on here. Is there anything else that he has done to you? Hey, stop. You're just making it worse asking him questions like that. Calm down. He already looks really sad and fed up. Why do you keep going on about it? How can I not be mad about this? Dad looks after Stevie and does all the housework. And yet Larry keeps making him feel like he doesn't belong there and treats him badly. He hasn't even left him anything to eat while they're away for the weekend. That's abuse. Aren't you angry? Do you think dad deserves to be treated like this? After listening to your dad's side of the story, it seems like Larry is treating him badly. But surely we should listen to Larry's point of view as well. What do you mean his point of view? He'll just try to get out of it. I really don't understand how Larry could behave like this towards dad. It's not like he's young and doesn't know better. He's old enough to know how to respect and treat people properly. Let's take Dad out for dinner now. If we keep going like this, everywhere will be closed. We can finish up this conversation at the restaurant. Dad must be starving. Let's do that. I'm really hungry now, Paula. Is there anything in particular you want to eat? Just choose whatever you want. You don't have to worry about telling us what you want. Well, I'd like to go and eat at the new Regent Hotel. Have dinner at a hotel? Yes, I saw it on the TV. Apparently, the lobster is to die for. I just thought of it as I haven't eaten seafood for what seems like ages. Okay, let's go there then. Adam, what are you waiting for? Pick up your stuff and let's go. Dad, how is it? Is it good? You said you wanted to eat here. You're eating really well. Happy birthday, Jim. Enjoy your dinner. Thank you. You two are the best. This really is delicious. I told you you should have come to us after you sold the house, didn't I? You decided to go to Jamie's instead as she's the eldest, and you're getting nothing but grief. Aren't I right? You really are. I didn't realize I'd be treated like a third wheel like this, did I? After your mother died, I got used to doing the housework and working at the same time, but I never expected to be used as some kind of housekeeper like this. I retired for a reason. I should be enjoying my retirement, not basically working full time again for my son-in-law. I don't think that you should just carry on like this. I think you should talk with Larry and see if you can work this out together. 
Maybe we should all meet together sometime, maybe next week, and try to talk through this? What do you think? No, it's fine. What is there to talk about? They'll just say they haven't done anything wrong and talk their way out of it, and I'll end up just feeling worse than I already do. I'll just have to put up with it, that's all. Put up with it? Why should you have to put up with being treated like that? If they try to make you do something that you don't want to do, just leave. Jamie's house isn't the only place that you can stay, is it? Paula, stop it. This isn't something that can be solved by getting mad at each other. Dad isn't a teenaged boy. What is running away from home going to solve? We should all get together and discuss this like adults. Let everyone have their say. That's the only way that this can be sorted. I'm only acting like this because I can't stand the thought of Dad having to live like this. That's all. Nowadays, the father-in-law only has to blink and everyone's saying bad things about him. It really is frightening. It's fine. It's useless talking about it anymore. It'll just make everything worse. Why are you being so weak and hopeless? You were always so strong and sure of yourself. You need to be like that again. It's her birthday and everything, but you just look so hopeless and defeated. Is there anything else you want for your birthday? I'll buy you whatever you want. Oh, really? Shall we go to a shopping mall together and have a look around? I haven't been to one for a really long time. There's a pair of shoes that I've been looking at, you see. Sure, why not? Let's go to the shopping mall and look for some shoes for you. I'll let you have the full birthday package this year. Food shopping. I'm sorry you've spent so much money today. Will you be okay? We had a really expensive meal at the hotel, and then you bought me shoes, clothes, and a new watch on top of that. No, oh, you must have spent so much. It's fine. It's money that I'm earning to look after you anyway at the end of the day. Do you feel a bit better now? Yes, of course. Today was like a real birthday. Oh, thank you so much, Paula. And you too, Adam. I love all my new things. It's okay. I'm glad you had a good day. Are you okay, Adam? You don't look very happy. It's not because Paula has spent so much money on me, is it? Adam isn't stingy like Larry is, Dad. He's just worried about you. That's why he's looking like that. Isn't it, Adam? To tell you the truth, I... Hang on, uh, be quiet a second. My wicked son-in-law Larry is trying to call me. You know, I wonder what he wants suddenly calling like this. Put it on speakerphone, Dad. Let's all hear what he has to say. Okay, sure. Hello? Jim, why are you always like this? What do you mean? What have I said? I thought you said that Paul and Adam were going to meet you today. You should have been enjoying your time with them, not getting caught up in anything else or causing any more trouble than you already have. Why are you always harassing me and making me feel miserable? Why? What have I done to make you act this way towards me? I really, really don't understand you at all. I don't know how someone could possibly act like this. How can you talk to me like that? I'm your father-in-law. You're supposed to respect me. How can I not speak to you like that? I can't help it. I've tried to put up with you, but I just can't take it any longer. You should understand better than anyone. What have I done? I don't know what you're talking about. You're talking to the wrong person, surely. This is your action every time, isn't it? I'm so sick and tired of this now. If you keep treating me like this, how can I possibly respect you? If you want to be respected and treated like a father-in-law should be treated, you should start acting like one. Hey! Larry! How can you speak to- I can't believe him! He just says what he has to say and hangs up, just like that. You heard him, didn't you? This is what I have to put up with all the time these days. Jim, what did you say to Larry to make him so mad? 
What's happened to make him get so worked up? He doesn't seem the kind of person to get so mad without a reason. What do you mean, what did I say to him? I've been with you both this whole time. When did I have time to say anything to him? I didn't do or say anything to him, honest. He just gets himself all worked up about something, then phones and shouts at me to make himself feel better. He said if I wanted to be treated like a father-in-law, to act like one. You heard him, didn't you? Is that how someone should speak to their father-in-law? What on earth is going on here? This makes no sense at all. Oh, who on earth is calling at this time? Hello? Madam, it's me. Uh, did I wake you? I'm really sorry for calling and waking you up so early in the morning. Jim, what's happened? Uh, why are you calling so early in the morning? It's nothing important, really. You were the only person I thought I could turn to. I couldn't think of anyone else I could call. Jim, are you crying? What's happened? I've left. Left? Left where? Left my house. Uh, well, Larry's house. Can you come and get me? I haven't even brought my wallet with me, so I can't call a taxi. I have nothing. All I have with me is my phone and the clothes on my back. I've left everything else behind. Okay, I'll wake up Paula and get her to go and get you. Can you tell me exactly where you are, please? Who is it? Is it Dad? Your dad says he's left Jamie and Larry's place. I think you'd better go and see what's going on. What? Dad's left? Okay, I'll go and see what's happening. I'll be back soon. Sorry for calling and turning up so early in the morning. You must have been really shocked. What are you talking about? We only care that you're okay. You're the one who looks shocked. Jim, whatever happened to make you leave the house at this time in the morning? I fought really badly with Larry last night. As soon as they got back from LA, he started shouting at me like he was on the phone the other day. It was totally one-sided. I couldn't get a word in. I don't know what I've done to make him hate me so much. He said that he hates it that I have to live with them. He said he's really uncomfortable with me being there all the time, and that our lifestyle patterns are very different, which makes him stressed. He also said that I think that I'm helping, but to be honest, it just doesn't help him at all. It just makes things worse. He said all of that to me without so much as blinking. I was so shocked and frightened by the way he was talking to me that I was at a loss for words. I just stood there silently while he shouted at me like I was a naughty little kid or something. How can I do everything 100% to his liking? That is totally unrealistic, isn't it? If everything I try to do to help is wrong anyway, and he doesn't even appreciate my efforts, I don't see why I have to stay there any longer. I thought about it long and hard, and I came to the conclusion that I couldn't live with them in that house for even a minute longer, so I just left without really thinking about what I would do next. I didn't think I'd be able to leave if I met Larry when he woke up, so I left early, just like that. I just can't believe it. Larry really is something else. I never really liked him from the start. Do you think that Larry was trying to make Dad leave by himself as Dad being at home all the time was a nuisance to him? He couldn't kick him out, so he thought if he kept treating him like that, eventually he'll have had enough and leave of his own accord. I'll just try phone Larry in a minute and see what is going on. At the least, he should be told that Dad is here with us now. He would be worried if he realized that Dad wasn't in his room at this time in the morning. Oh, don't bother doing that now. They'll all still be asleep. If you call and wake Stevie up, Larry won't be happy with you either. Call him tomorrow or sometime. I think that would be best too. He might be pleased that Dad has left after all. Dad, you can just stay with us for a while until this all gets sorted out at least. The two of us just live a simple life. 
so you won't have to cook or clean like you did at Jamie's place. You can just relax. That sounds great, and I'm really grateful. Is this okay with you, Adam? Is it okay if I live here with you? Well, to be honest, I can't say that I'm ecstatic about it, but I guess there's nothing that I can do about it at the moment. You don't have anywhere else to go, do you? You can stay with us for now, but we'll have to all meet up together soon and have a talk. See if we can sort all of this out. I think the only way to sort this out is to meet and talk about it like adults. I'll try to call Larry and see what he says. You can call or do whatever you want. I don't want to see Jamie or Larry again. I am done with them. Their behavior is just disgusting. This is why I should have kept hold of something. Now that I don't have a penny to my name, even my kids and their husbands look down on me. How hard must it have been for you living with Jamie and Larry for you to shed this many tears over it? Don't cry, Dad. You can live happily here with us. Adam is nothing like Larry. Don't worry about that. Adam has been so worried about you since you told us what was going on with you and Larry the other day. He's the kindest person I know. He really is. You don't know how grateful I am that he even answered the phone to me when I called so early this morning. I don't know where I should have gone or what I would have done if you hadn't answered. Adam, do you know how scared I was that you would throw me out as well? I'm gonna rely on you two from now on, not Jamie and Larry. I know she's my eldest, but what is the use of that when her husband treats me so badly? I am so lucky that I have you. How could I throw you out when you have nowhere else to go? I'm sure no son-in-law could just ignore his father-in-law if he said he'd left home. Anyway, you look really tired, Dad. Why don't you go and get some rest? I've made the bed all ready for you in the next room. Okay, I will. Thank you so much for all of this, Adam. Hey, Adam, what are you doing calling me this early in the morning? Is there something wrong? Sorry, but I don't think I can speak now. I'm pretty busy. Larry, I called because I think there is something that I should tell you. Jamie and Paula's dad is at our place. He phoned really early this morning and asked us to go and pick him up as he'd left your house and he couldn't stay there a minute longer. Pardon? Jim is at yours? What is he doing there? It seems like he's feeling really hurt after arguing with you last night. Why didn't you tell us that you and dad aren't in a very good place recently? I was really surprised by what he told us last weekend. What did he say? He told you that I've been abusing him or not giving him any food or something like that, didn't he? He seems to be telling the same tale to anyone and everyone lately. When we arrived at your place, he was busy on his hands and knees cleaning because he said you like it when the house is clean. Then, to be honest, when we were on the way back from dinner, we heard what you said to him over the phone. Oh, so you're already thinking of me as the terrible son-in-law too now. I guess that's the reason your wife suddenly called me yesterday to tell me I shouldn't live like this too then. The Larry I know wouldn't suddenly get angry like that without any reason. So I called mainly because I thought that what I heard you saying on the phone was strange and out of character. That there must have been a reason for you to be that mad and shout at him like you did. What's happened between you and Jim? The problem is... I... No, I can't tell you. If I say anything else bad about Jim, he's gonna think that I'm making things up about him because I don't want him to live with us and make up some other story about me. This whole repertoire thing is coming out already. It's a really long story. Even if I try to tell you now, you won't believe me. Now that Jim is living with you, I'm sure you'll realize what the problem is soon enough. When you do, call me and let's talk again. I'll tell you everything then. Ugh, I have such a headache already that I don't have the energy to explain everything to you anyway. I'll find out soon? What does that mean? You really will. It would be good for you to draw a firm line right away too. If you treat him well, there's no limit and no end to what he wants. I feel really bad that the thing that has made me suffer has now passed to you, but... Anyway, don't believe everything Jim tells you, okay? I've gotta go now. Bye. Who am I supposed to believe when they both say that they've done nothing wrong? 
Oh, this is a really strange situation. Hey, Jim, I'm back. The lasagna looked really good today, so I bought some. How is the house in such a mess again? Oh, Adam, have you had a good day? What have you got there? Oh, lasagna, that looks really good. Where's the big pan for me to warm that up in? I can't seem to find it. No, oh, dear, I guess it's somewhere here amongst all this washing up. I'd better do some washing up so that I can find it. Washing up? I only cleared it all last night. How is there so much there again already? Oh, I made some different foods that Paula likes, that's all. I seem to have used a lot of the pots and pans. Oh, uh, I see. Why didn't you clean up as you were making it all, Dad? The island table is a right mess, and there are carrot peelings and onion skins everywhere. The kitchen is like a disaster zone. No, oh, I just thought it would be easier to clean it all up in one go when I started the dishes later. That's all. I didn't realize you were so house proud. Being house proud doesn't come into it, really. You've just made such a mess and used up all the pans and dishes in one go. We don't even have anything to eat dinner on. And you can't throw the food waste in with the recycling. That has to be thrown away separately, you know. You need to throw the leftover food away into the compost bin, here. Ugh, it's all trash at the end of the day. Why can't I just throw it all in the trash together? And why are you nagging me already? You've only just come in the door from work, and nag me is the first thing you're doing. It's not nagging, it's just basic household rules. If we throw all that trash away together like that, we'll get fined. When I lived alone, I always just threw it all away together like that. It's fine, you just have to be careful not to get caught, that's all. Jim, you have to stick to rules like this. There are reasons you can't just throw it all away together. It's not difficult to do either. They're really strict about separating the trash, food waste, and recycling here nowadays. No, oh, you didn't throw it all away together, did you? Well, I could only see one trash can, so I just chucked all the trash in there together. Oh, it's no big deal. Please don't throw everything away together like this again. Do you understand? It's not good for the environment. Plus, if you mix the food waste in with it all, it smells and we'll have rats and all sorts in here. Okay, I get it. I'll be more careful in the future. Aren't you overreacting, though? You seem to have got really mad over nothing. Now I feel a bit hurt, you know? I came home from work looking forward to having a bit of a rest, and the house is a huge mess. I did get a bit mad, to be honest, anyone would. Jim, you can cook here and do whatever you like, but I'd be really grateful if you cleaned up after yourself too. Paula really hates it when the house is messy and is already always telling me to tidy up. I can't deal with you making huge messes like this as well. I don't have enough energy after work to clean it all up after you. In future, please clean up as you go. Don't leave a huge mess like this. If you're so tired too, just leave the cleaning. It's a woman's job anyway. Paula can do it. As long as it isn't too bad, it's fine. You don't have to make such a fuss about a little mess now, do you? If I don't tidy up or clean either, the house will be like a pigsty. It'll smell too. How can I possibly relax when the house is in this state? If we both clean a little bit each, it'll all be done in no time. No, oh, you sound exactly like Larry. He was always nagging me to clean up after myself. Now you're starting it too. It's our house. As long as we know where things are, I don't see what the problem is. Anyway, I'm really tired now. Alright, alright, I'll tidy up all of this and do the washing up as well, okay? I'll clean everything up, so stop your nagging. I'm sick of everyone nagging me all the time. Hey, Adam! How could you? Why are you making Dad do all the cleaning? Is he our maid now or something? Whatever are you talking about? When I got back from work, I found Dad doing the washing up and cleaning the floors, crying. He said you told him not to make a mess and to help you clean up the house. 
Why did you say that to him when he's already traumatized from living with Jamie and Larry? You can only say that because you didn't see the state of the kitchen when I came home. The whole kitchen from the sink to the island table was filthy and covered in food peelings. I was shocked at the mess. He'd also thrown the food waste, recycling, and trash out together, so it was all wet and smelly. I had to sort all of that out and wash the recycling again. I don't mind him cooking, but surely he can clean up after himself, shouldn't he? I had to scrub the sides really hard with the wet wipe to try and get off the sauce stains that he just left there. It was nearly impossible to shift. If he'd wiped it up as soon as it spilled, it would have been really easy to get off. Surely I should be able to tell him that at least. Has it stained the counter? It hasn't, has it? You got it off. So what's the problem? Dad cleaned the whole house while you were relaxing in the bath. Haven't you noticed how much messier the house has been since Dad came to live with us? You must have noticed it, surely. I know that he's staying with us for a short time while we sort this whole mess out, but surely he should clean up after himself at least. I should be able to tell him to separate the trash and to clean up after himself, shouldn't I? If he keeps throwing the trash out like that, we're gonna get fined. You know how strict they are about that recently. I didn't tell you not to say anything to him. I just want him to be able to rest a bit after having such a hard time at Jamie and Larry's, that's all. From now on, I'll help with the housework and cleaning when I get home from work. So don't ask Dad to do any, okay? I'll do all of Dad's cleaning. If you want to get some rest, I'll do yours too. I wish you wouldn't speak like that. It's like you are helping me out and taking credit for the things that you should really be doing anyway, seeing as we both work full-time jobs and you live here too. Anyway, you can start by doing the washing up tonight after dinner. Do you feel better again now that the house is clean again? No, I don't know why you make such a fuss about cleaning when you could just live comfortably. The reason I make a fuss about the house being clean is so that I can live comfortably. I don't feel good if the house is in a mess. It's also a lot harder to clean it all in one go when it has got really messy. If you tidy up as you go and pick things up when you see that they're out of place, it never gets to the point when you have to spend hours tidying. Paula said that she was going to do the washing up tonight, so you can get some rest, Jim. Okay, sure. Paula must be really tired. Anyway, why did she suddenly go out without eating her dinner? Oh, I I'm not sure. I think she was talking to Gary on the phone before she left. Gary? Her brother Gary? No, uh, she's back now. Paula, is there something wrong with Gary? No, he just finalized his divorce at the court this week, didn't he? He was just calling me to see if I could lend him some money. Money? It seems like he had to pay more because his liability in the divorce was greater. Once they had sold the house and divided the money between them, he didn't have enough to be able to afford anywhere else to live. He said he went to the estate agents today and didn't even have enough money for a deposit to rent somewhere. So he called me to ask if I could help him out a bit. That's all. Did you agree to help him out? Where has he even been living up until now if he doesn't have the house anymore? He said that he's been staying with a friend for the last few days. I guess he didn't want to be a burden on his friend, so he decided to call me to see if I could help him out. It doesn't seem like yesterday that he was getting married. I can't believe that he's getting divorced already. His ex-wife must be a piece of work through. Just making him leave like that when he has nowhere else to go. Oh, she is so cold-hearted. Right? I thought that too. Anyway, I told her that Dad was staying here with us for a while, and he asked if it would be okay if he stayed here too, just until he got himself sorted. What do you think, Adam? What? Gary can stay here with us too? Yeah, it must be so difficult for him at the moment. He didn't really want to ask, but he wanted to know if he could stay here for just a few days after he leaves his friend's place. He could stay in the same room as Dad. He works too so he would come home around the same time as we do. He'll hardly be at home anyway. He must have been having a really hard time for him to pluck up the courage to phone and ask you for help. How much money did he say he had? I'll ask the estate agent we used if we could show him some places that he can afford. He's going to be living alone, so even a studio apartment would be okay for the short term, surely? 
I think that rather than staying with us. Making a fresh start in a new place of his own would be better for everyone. Don't be so cold-hearted, Adam. Gary could just stay with us for as long as Dad does, couldn't he? It's still an extra two family members in our house. I don't think that's something to be taken lightly. What about the increases to all the bills and food and things like that? We have to have a chat with Jamie first. And we have to think about the problems between Dad and Larry. I think if we just leave it like this for much longer, they'll never be able to sort it out. Dad can't live in our house forever, can he? Let's talk with Jamie first about Dad's living arrangements, then we can decide what to do about Gary's problem better after that. Yes, that sounds like a good idea. Let's talk more about Gary later. Paula, just tell Gary that you think it'll be okay for now. I think if we ask Adam now, judging by his expression, he'll refuse straight away. So let's see how it goes and try to get him here quietly then. If we keep going on at him about Gary, he might end up kicking me out as well. Okay, Dad. I'll tell Gary. Hi, Adam. You're back late. How was your business trip? You must be really tired. Here, let me help you with your stuff. Dad wanted to eat pizza, so we ordered some in and have just started eating now. I bet you're glad to be home again, aren't you? If you haven't had dinner yet, let's eat this together. There's plenty to go around. Hang on, what's that smell? It's like a, a musty smell. Why are there clothes on the sofa? Are these dirty clothes to be washed or... And how many days has that washing up in the sink been there for? Have you managed to use up all the plates and stuff? I guess that's where the smell is coming from. I'll sort it all out when we finish dinner. Don't worry about it. Well, you need to do the dishes first so that we can have something to put our dinner on, surely? That's why you ordered pizza, wasn't it? You somehow seem to have managed to use all the cutlery and crockery we have. Paula said that she'd sort it all after dinner, didn't she? Don't go on at her. Let her eat first. She must be hungry. You should think yourself lucky to have a wife who does so much around the house like Paula does. Woman these days aren't how they used to be. He's right. I've left the trousers on the sofa because I'm planning on wearing them in the morning. Rather than putting them away every day, I like it better if I can leave them there where I can see them. It makes it much easier and quicker to get ready for work then. Don't you agree, Dad? Yes, it's so much more convenient for Paula to leave her pants there, you know? What's the point in hanging them up in the wardrobe when she's gonna wear them again the next day anyway? Adam, why don't you leave your jacket on the sofa too? It really is so much easier. What is this? Shed skin from a snake or something? Paula, go and hang up your clothes properly in the wardrobe, please. They're gonna get all creased if you leave them there like that. If they get creased, you can just iron them again before you put them on, can't you? No, oh, it's not a big deal. Why are you looking at your wife so seriously? It's like you're shooting daggers at her from your eyes. Why are you turning into such a clean freak? Just let her leave her clothes there if that's easier for her. It's not a big deal, just let it go. This house isn't clean enough for you to call me a clean freak. It is a total mess, in fact. And this is not an acceptable amount of mess to just let go. If you leave your clothes all over the sofa, how are you supposed to sit on it? If you can't sit on it anyway, what's the point of having a sofa there? Closets are built to put clothes in. Sofas, on the other hand, are built to be sat on. Another thing, if you don't clean the toilet every day, it gets water stains on it, and it starts to smell. And isn't doing the washing up after eating and cleaning up hair and stuff on the floor when you see it just normal things to do? I don't understand how two adults have left the house in such a state after a few days on their own. Hair everywhere, no clean plates, filthy bathroom, filthy kitchen, clothes all over the sofa. I really can't believe it. A group of teenagers could have kept it cleaner. You really are a clean freak, aren't you? Are you sure you don't have to go to the doctor about this? It seems to me that you have quite a problem. You're a lot like Larry. You really are. 
I don't think the problem is that I'm like Larry. The problem is that you make such a mess and don't clean up after yourself. This is the reason why you were fighting with Larry too, wasn't it? You kept making a mess and not cleaning up after yourself, so Larry tried to make you clean, which you didn't like and decided to tell everyone how badly he was treating you for doing something a normal person would have done without even being asked. What? Are you saying that Dad's in the wrong now? Not Larry? Yes, now that I think about it, Larry wasn't completely in the wrong. No, he shouldn't have talked to or treated Dad like he did, but now Dad is living with us, I can kind of see where Larry was coming from. Dad just ignores rules and things that should be done around the house without thinking. He doesn't put things away, he doesn't clean up after using the kitchen, and he doesn't even sort the trash out. If I say something to him about anything at all, he makes out like I'm strange to think that or that I'm in the wrong, when it's all just basic things that should be done around the house. Jim, do you perhaps act the same way to Larry? Yes, I did. Of course, it's all my fault. How could any of you possibly be to blame? Dad, what are you talking about? I don't think you have done anything wrong. I don't see what the problem is. Is it really such a big deal if the trash is a bit mixed up and the house is a bit messy? It's not the end of the world, is it? We can tidy up, can't we? Dad has lived like this his whole life without a problem. How is it so hard for you to understand or accept that? What? So everything's fine because we can just tidy up all of his mess for him? Is it okay for one person to make all the mess and for other people to have to clear it all up? You're exactly the same, if I'm honest. You say that you'll help, but don't really do anything useful. In the end, I have to do all the things that you've done to help again because you didn't do them properly the first time. You say you're going to do the washing up and the cleaning, but in the end, I have to do it all again anyway. Tell me the truth. Do you mean to say that you can't see the difference in the state of the house from when the two of us lived together and when Jim started to live here with us? If it goes on like this for a few months, then a few years, the house will turn into a pigsty. A pigsty? See, I just stayed quiet and now you're thoughtlessly saying whatever you want. Dad, Paula, I got paid today, so I bought some food for... No, hey Adam, when did you get back? How was your business trip? Gary, what are you doing here? I told you not to come back tonight, didn't I? I haven't even asked Adam if it's okay for you to stay here yet. Uh, well... Excuse me, what on earth is going on here? Why does Gary have a key to our house? And why did he just come in without knocking or anything? Did you let him stay here without telling me while I was away on my business trip? You did, didn't you? I can't think of any other explanation for all of this. No, oh, well, my friend told me that her boyfriend was coming and to go somewhere else, so I forgot that Adam was back tonight. <laughs> Sorry, Paula. I had nowhere else to go, so I asked Paula if it was okay for me to stay here for a while. I'm really sorry I stayed here without asking your permission. But don't worry, I won't be here for very long. Just about three months, maybe. I'm working really hard to save money for a house. I'll be gone before you know it. I'll leave when Dad does, okay? That'll be fine, won't it? Hey, don't bring me into this. I have permission to live here. It's a totally different situation to you just staying here without Adam's consent. I do not understand what is happening here. What are you all doing here in my house without me knowing? Adam, let's go outside and have a chat about all of this. Just the two of us. Get out. Pardon? I can't be held responsible for the words that might escape from my mouth right now. While I'm still being nice, take Dad and Gary and get out. What do you mean, get out? Why do I have to leave my house? This isn't your house anymore. This is my house that I bought with my money. I said we should talk again about Gary staying here, didn't I? You agreed, then just quietly brought him here to live while I was away on a business trip without even telling me? So it's fine to just bury your head in the sand and do whatever you want? Without a thought for anyone else? Get out now! Adam, I thought you were such a nice, kind person, but I guess I was wrong. 
Gary had nowhere to go. Do you think Paula would just let Gary stay here without your permission on the drop of a hat? She was helping her little brother out when he had nowhere else to go. How can you send us all outside at this time just because we didn't listen to you? Where are we supposed to go? To be honest, I don't care where you go. As long as I don't have to see you all, that's fine with me. If that's what you want, we'll leave. Paula, let's go. We'd better go before he kicks us all out for good. You think I'm joking? That I'll forget everything you've done and just let you back in again like nothing has happened? You really don't know me, do you? I've been taken advantage of by your family once too often. I am done. This was the last straw. Dad? Okay, well, I got paid today, so let's get a hotel or something for the night. We can work something else out in the morning. Adam, don't be like this. I thought that you were different from Larry, but you're both the same. You're like two peas in a pod, you and Larry. You really are. I can't believe how badly you've treated Dad in the few days he stayed with you either. I've heard all about it. How you made him clean up after you all. Do all the washing up and clean the floors on his hands and knees while you rested. How can you treat him like that, especially after what he went through with Larry? Kind people are always the worst off in the end. They really are. Anyway, we're leaving. Let's go, Dad. Paula, uh, come on, what are you waiting for? All right, I'm coming. Adam, you've made a big mistake this time. You better think of what you've done wrong and try to fix things. What on earth are you talking about? Oh, it's you. <laughs> Hello, Adam. I guess you're calling me because something's happened with Jamie and Paula's dad, right? Hi, Larry. Yes, I am so mad right now. I thought I'd call you as I expect you know how I'm feeling at the moment. Did he just do whatever he wanted and not clean up after himself or anything when he lived with you too? Yeah, he did. Not only that, when Stevie's friend's dads came over, he was just interfering with everything. It was a nightmare. He was just butting into all their conversations all the time. It was so embarrassing. He went to the supermarket, bought hundreds of dollars worth of food, and ended up throwing at least half of it away. He wanted lots more spending money when all he was doing was watching Stevie for an hour or two. He always wanted us to buy him expensive takeouts for dinner. There was always something that he wanted to eat. He even asked for a buffet service to come to our house for his birthday. That's the kind of things people use for weddings and things like that. I tried to put up with him quietly by myself for a few weeks, but I couldn't do that for any longer. So I tried to ask him nicely to tidy up. When that didn't work, I tried to bully him into doing things. Bullying him was the only way to make him listen, even a little. It had to be done. Even if I had to act the part of the evil son-in-law, it really couldn't be helped. Also, it didn't seem to be enough for him to alienate his daughter, you and Paula from me. Oh, no. He even had the cheek to phone my mom and tell her how badly I'd been acting towards him. I found that out when I went to LA that time, when you and Paula had taken Jim out for his birthday. He told my mom she should teach me how to act in front of others. Mom was so apologetic to him for how badly I'd apparently acted towards him. I was absolutely horrified when I found out that my mom had to apologize for things that I hadn't even done. I felt really bad that I just put up with Jim's nonsense for so long. I really wished I'd done something about him sooner, before he got my poor mom involved. It never crossed my mind that he'd go as far as to phone my mom. Oh, so that's why you were so mad when you phoned Jim that day. I really had no idea. You should have told me. Why did you keep all that to yourself? Why do you think I didn't want to tell you? I was worried that you would unnecessarily be dragged into this whole mess. I didn't tell you because I was worried you'd be dragged into it as well, but in the end, you ended up in the same situation as I'm in. When you called last time to say that Jim was staying with you, I was so angry and it was so unfair that I think I wanted you to experience it too, so that you would at least understand how I was feeling. In the end, you seem to have come off even worse. Oh, I'm really sorry that I let this happen to you too. I think if you told me what I know now, I might not have believed you anyway. It all sounds so ridiculous. Even if I wanted to be neutral in it all and not take sides, Jim was crying so pitifully. 
I really thought that you were abusing him in some way, as he had suggested. I'm really sorry that you had to go through all of that alone. If only we'd talked openly about it all from the start, it would have never got as bad as it is now. Now, it's ended up more difficult for the both of us, hasn't it? You're right, it really has. What do you think we should do next? Do you have any ideas? This time, even Gary ended up living in our house without my permission, so I threw all three of them out. I told them all clearly that this was my house that I bought with my money that I had saved. If I wasn't firm with them, I was worried that the house would stay overrun with Paula's family members, and that really isn't it. They thought I was a pushover because I'm usually so nice and kind to everyone. If it means I have to be pushed around like this, I'd rather not live with even Paula. I haven't even been able to sleep properly since her dad moved in with us. You did well. You have to confront that family squarely for them to understand anything. To be honest, I've thought of divorcing Jamie too. They all live like pigs, it seems. I wondered if she'd listen to my side of things now that dad is living with you. But since they spoke on the phone the other day, she's been giving me a really hard time. I was so fed up with it all that I've taken a few days off from work, and I'm staying with Stevie at my parents' house. Oh, I see. All three of the siblings are about to become divorcees. I see. Their dad got divorced too, didn't he? A long time ago, I know. I think I can definitely see why someone would want to divorce him, can't you? Oh, really? Uh, but yes, I think he must be impossible for even the most patient person to live with. They're a really strange family, aren't they? Anyway, I hope you manage to sort things out once and for all. I know we won't be family anymore, but let's meet again sometime. We should grab a beer or something. Okay, that sounds good. Thanks, and good luck with everything. Dad, I was going to come and visit you today anyway. I have so much to talk to you about. Are you at work? Adam, I have something to ask you. Are you not getting on very well with your father-in-law at the moment? Has something happened? Pardon? What do you mean? Well, I just had a call from him, and he didn't sound very happy. He was crying, in fact. He said that he doesn't think that he's really done anything wrong in particular, but you've been treating him really coldly. Why on earth have you been like that with him? Even if your father-in-law is sometimes annoying and says hateful things, you should just smile and move on. That's how it works. Do you think it's okay to treat him like that? He felt bad enough to phone his son-in-law's father, in tears. Oh, so that man phoned you as well then. Excuse me? That man? Dad, this is why I was going to go and see you tonight. I wanted to tell you this in person. I'm getting a divorce. My father-in-law used to live with my sister-in-law, but he recently came to live with us. He just makes such a mess of the house, doesn't clean or tidy up after himself, and doesn't even realize that he should. He's also always getting Paula to spend lots of money on him, buying him things and expensive food and things like that. If that wasn't enough, he invited his divorced son to come and live with us too while I was away on a business trip, without so much as a word to me about it. When I try to say something, he starts crying and telling everyone who will listen how I'm such an evil son-in-law who just rests while he does all the work and how I shout at him and treat him like dirt. I am so mad now that I don't think I can carry on living like that any longer. What? What are you saying? So his crying on the phone to me was all an act too? Yes, you've got it. Exactly that. I spoke to my brother-in-law and he said that exactly the same thing happened to him. At least you called me straight away to check. His mother kept it to herself for months. Wow, I don't believe it. What is wrong with your father-in-law? Why is he acting like this? How is he so good at acting? He phoned you both to tell you to watch out for your sons, that they had treated him badly, that you hadn't raised us properly. I guess that's why he called. No matter how mad you get, how can you phone your son-in-law's parents to slag off their sons to them? I really don't understand him. Never in my life have I met such a person. And Paula, even though she must know exactly what her dad is like, she's just stood by and done nothing, I guess, right? Yeah, it's more wicked than that. It's like she totally believes that her dad is some kind of angel or something. I really don't understand why she's being like that. Was mom like this too? No, she wasn't. 
Don't get me wrong, Mom was good to her parents, but she was a good wife too. She didn't try to cover up for all of her mom's faults like that. What is going to happen to that family now, I wonder? I have no idea. I've changed the locks to our apartment, so they won't be able to get in even if they want to. I think I'm going to have to stay here for a few days, just until things settle down a bit. If I met them coming out of my apartment, I don't know what I might do or say to them, you see? Just let it all out. Go and tell them all the things that you've been wanting to say but held back. They deserve to pay for making things so hard for my poor son all this time. You really are the best, Dad. Okay, I'll go and tell them what I think of them. I was always fine doing most of the housework. This isn't the 50s. I never believed it was just a woman's job or anything, and I like cooking. It never occurred to me that Paula was so ungrateful all this time, and that she'd turn on me in an instant like this to take her dad's side. You need to stand up for yourself. You know I have your back. Thanks, Dad. I know what I have to do now. Hey, you know me, don't you? I live here. I'm the wife of the gentleman who lives here. You've seen me all the time and I always say hi to you when we pass. Don't you remember me? Hmm, I'm not really sure. I haven't worked here that long, so I can't really remember who is who and who lives where yet, you see? The gentleman who lives here called us to say that there was someone at the door who kept trying to put the wrong key in the lock, so he thought it was a burglar trying to enter. He asked us to come and check it out. If you were his wife, surely you would have the right door key and be able to get in without any problem. Ah, uh, the problem is there was an argument between me and my husband. He must have changed the locks, so now I don't have the right key to be able to open the door. Can't you try to talk to him for me and check that I really am his wife? I am not a burglar, honestly. Well, I was just called to check on the house. I don't know all the fine details of the situation between you and your husband, but I'm just here doing my job. Oh, hello, sir. You're back. Oh, Adam. Thank goodness. What are you doing here? I'll be on my way, then. Do you need me to call the police for you, by the way? I can if you want to. No, I'll be fine, thank you. Thanks for checking the house for me. Adam? I can't believe you're here. Why did you say someone was trying to break in? I was really shocked when the guard came and started questioning me. He thought I was a burglar. I thought he was going to call the police. Anyway, let's go inside. You were trying to break in though, weren't you? You were trying to enter my house without permission, in the same way as you let your brother live in my house without my permission. Oh, Adam, what are you going on about? You know I'm not a burglar. Are you still mad at me because of what I said before? I'm really sorry, you know. Let's pretend that all that business with Gary didn't happen. Dad has decided that he's going to go and live with Gary. We can live here again, just the two of us, like it used to be. Back to our happy, stress-free house of two. I don't believe you. Do you think I can just forget everything that has happened and go back to the way it used to be? Well, I can't. You can go and live with your dad and Gary, too. You obviously prefer them to me anyway. Without me there, the three of you can eat takeout together every night. It'll be a lot more comfortable for the three of you without me nagging you to do the housework and to clean up. I'm sure you'll be very happy together. Aren't I right? What do you mean? I love you. To me, there's no one better in the whole world. Why are you trying to make me go and live with them? I need you. Why are you suddenly sucking up to me now? You've been on your dad's side through this whole mess. Now that I'm finally sticking up for myself and have thrown you out, you're finally thinking of me again? You are pathetic. You really are. Just get lost. I'm so fed up with you after the way you've acted this last week. I can't take it anymore. Go and live with your beloved father and brother. No, oh, I guess your sister will need a place to live too now. You can all live happily together. Don't any of you even think about getting remarried and messing up anyone else's lives. The three of you can just live together through thick and thin for the rest of your lives. I've left your stuff and the divorce papers downstairs by the apartment entrance. You can pick them up on your way out. Adam! I love you! Don't leave me! 
After that, I obviously went ahead and divorced Paula. The process wasn't a smooth one, but luckily it's all over now. She tried to drag it out as long as she could, but she couldn't afford to keep it going forever. I should have seen the warning signs from the beginning, but I guess I was blinded by love. I always worked longer hours than her, as well as taking care of the housework. I never minded doing the housework, so I didn't think much of it. I never expected her father to be so much worse than her, and for her to reveal how little she appreciated everything I did for her. I guess I should actually thank her father for revealing that to me. Anyway, I'll make sure to find a partner who actually appreciates cleanliness as much as I do next time. And I should definitely find someone who appreciates my opinions and talks to me before moving in hordes of slovenly relatives. As for Paula and her family, last I heard, they were all living in assistant housing now. Paula was only working part-time, and Jamie was a housewife, so they aren't doing very well now. Their father also seems to be refusing to find new work. So, good luck to them, I suppose. I hope they change their ways and start working harder on themselves. As for me, I've been hanging out with Larry a lot more, so I'm glad one good thing came from our toxic marriages. He's a great friend, and I'm sure we'll both find new partners in no time. But until then, it's fishing every weekend for us. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos.